Hey guys, so at the beginning of this video, there's going to be me and a friend of mine, one of my coworkers. We're just going to try to figure out how to get a charcuterie board blank out of one of those HDPE molds. So this is my first time using one of those molds. So we have a little bit of com comedy and I decided to leave it in there. So for the first six minutes or so, it's just him and I trying to playing around and trying to get this thing out. So you can enjoy that. If not, you can skip ahead to this time and start the video from there if you'd like. <laughs> Why do you have to do the face? Uh, wait, where's the the rubber mallet? That's my jacket, didn't they? Oh, it's right here. All right, cool. Wow, I thought you were gonna let me over there. <laughs> okay, let's bust this joker out of here. I think what I'm gonna do is just tap the sides out. And I don't have much, so let's here we go. Jeez Louise. It didn't, they didn't really move at all. That silicone looking real good right now. <laughs> Silicone. Silicone. All right, I think I need actually some wood or something. Balance. I mean, yeah. Okay, let's figure this out. Ooh. Super destructive. Huh? Super destructive. She is in there like swimwear. I need some wood or something to set it up on. Uh, you have... GoPro, stop recording. Let's just get this right on the edge. Ooh, ooh. What was that? Uh, a little piece of apple wood, I think. No, it's a bark off of this thing. It's all the way on. Slide over something. coming out of there. It ain't moving. Uh, uh, I really do think I need to get the sides apart first. Um, we're dead. Yeah. There you go. Yeah, it came Nice. She said, nah, dog. <laughs> I think I filled it up too much. I mean, what's the point if you can't fill it all the way up to the top, right? That side released. Did I hit the camera? You hit me. Oh, sorry, dude. Yeah. She's released a tree now. One last one. All right, she's gonna come out now. Is she? I think so. You got it. Can you slide that? Right. Oh. There we go. Yeah, it moved. Because at the top, I can feel it now. Ooh. Wow, look really, at that. It looks really good on the bottom, though. No bubbles or anything, except for like that little. That one little giblet right there. That looks good. Nice. That little giblet. <laughs> this thing is heavy. Oh, yeah. Look at the side. Come look at the side. Lights kind of 
shadowing. Yeah. If you do it like this. Oh, yes, yes. There we go. Dude. It's nice. I like it. I like it a lot. Sweet. Thanks for the camera work, dude. Yes. That's a solid chunk. Yeah. Nice. Now we'll go ahead and we'll like shave it off. The bottom looks super cool though. Okay. Good. That piece is awesome. Yeah. I mean, I'm honestly, I am impressed with the fact that there aren't any voids. In yeah, there. there you go. Incredible solutions. Other than that, you got one. one little bubble there. There's one trapped in there, but that's kind of my fault there because I just tossed it in. But yeah, look, no, I mean, almost no bubbles at all. Let's see if we even shine a light in there and see what it does. Bro, there ain't no bubbles in there. Super cool. So maybe you might want to use mold release in the future. But I don't know what that will do. Live and learn, right? Yeah. Yeah. Careful! <gasps> I don't want you to cut yourself. Oh, no, it's still soft. Yeah. Yeah, it's still a little soft. Cool. All right. Soup's excited. Soup's. Soup's. Okay. Oh, there's a spider web on the thing. Okay, bye. GoPro, stop recording. Okay, so here we're starting out with um, trimming down the sides. Um, and if you notice, I'm turning the saw blade off every time I push it through, just to be safe. But the reason why I'm trimming the sides like this is the HDPE mold has a taper to the edges so that it was is able to slide out. So all I'm doing here is I'm just trimming that extra piece off um, so that I can get a square cut over on my bandsaw, which is what you'll see here next. I'm gonna take it from the table saw over to the bandsaw here in just a second. All right, now that we're over here on the bandsaw, I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to trim off all of those big pieces of apple wood that are hanging off the top. Um, and if you notice, my bandsaw is very close to the wall. I don't have a mobile stand. I never thought I would need it. And that's funny because now I need it. So you'll see me go almost all the way through and then flip it over and then finish the rest of the way through with a resaw blade on my bandsaw. And then right after we cut this off here in just a second, you'll see. I'm going to try to resaw this in half to make two different charcuterie boards. Um, and you'll see here how hard it is actually um, on the bandsaw blade that I have. What, it, what was happening was the pieces of epoxy were heating up and becoming sticky, almost like a glue, and it was really tough on the bandsaw blade. You can see me wiggling it here. Um, eventually, I just realized I got to go forward and pull it back every so often. So that way it doesn't gum up and uh, cause the blade to stop. So I'm going to go just like I did with the first pass, stop about halfway, flip it over, and do the second pass from the other side. The only issue with this is you'll see the blade doesn't perfectly meet up in the middle. I did have a little bit of deflection you'll see here. Got a little bit of blade deflection there. We'll send it through the planer and be all good. Really cool. So if you've seen my channel before, you notice that I have a DeWalt uh, surface planer. Uh, well, it uh, lets a few people use it and now it's it needs to be repaired before I can use it. So um, I reached out to a friend of mine, this older gentleman who is, you can see here in the video, He's one of the guys that has taught me the most when it comes to woodworking, and he has let me use his 13-inch uh, wide planer. This thing is super nice. So here you'll see me running it back and forth through the planer. And look how nice it looks.
we actually had another charcuterie board that we're making here. I'm not going to be doing a video on this one, um, but uh, it was really nice. It was just a piece of scrap walnut, and we decided to try a little bit with black and silver pigments. It actually came out really nice as well. But you'll see us here just sending it through. Because we were taking so many passes, um, the reason why we were taking so many passes was because it had like this piece that was caught from where we had the saw, the chainsaw deflected, and we didn't want to tear off and shoot a piece back at us. Here now we got the applewood charcuterie board back into the shop, and I'm just going to trim up both ends. Um, that way that there's they're square before I start sanding. So we're going to use our sander here. This is a Bosch sander. It's very nice. I will put a link down in the description to this sander. This one compares to the Festool Rotex. Um, this thing is really awesome, but it's about half the cost as the Rotex, but it performs almost exactly the same. So. We went ahead and went with the Bosch. It's a great product. If you want to check the link in the description, go check it out. Go for it. Here we're starting with 150 grit sandpaper, and that's all we used throughout this entire project. Um, so that's what's really cool about this sander. It's able to use um, 150 to really bite into this and really sand it very quickly and very efficiently. So it's a benefit to have a sander like this to save you some time and some money. But we're going to go ahead and we're going to sand both the top and the bottom and the sides. So and you'll see that here uh, really quickly. We'll go through, sand the top and the bottom, and now we're moving on to the edges. You really want to be careful when you're sanding the edges. That way you don't bevel them, that you really want to keep it square. Um, and this tool is very well balanced and it helps keep things square as well. to the finish we'll be using Rubio mono coat as our finish and I'm not going to go through an entire detailed um, process of this step because uh, I just posted a video and if you want to go back and check I'll leave it a link in the description but I'll also add it to the end if you watch all the way to the end you'll see it in the card at the end of the video um, how to have an awesome oil finish using Rubio mono coat All right, here comes the finale. Right, guys thank you for watching i really appreciate it thanks for supporting the good view woodworks channel if you would please head over to the website to go find awesome products that we use and recommend like our good view woodworks tape and the epoxy incredible solutions also the rubio monocoat go over there check that stuff out and go get some of that for yourself all right guys thank you for watching and as always thanks for hanging out with us
Guys, thank you for watching this video. If you wanna learn how to finish a charcuterie board, I want you to go ahead and click this video. And if you wanna see a product review of the sander we used in this video, click the video right here.